number three, handling glass wares and triple beam balance. The main aims of this experiment is to provide necessary knowledge for students to identify different types of glassware used in the laboratory and their purposes and to use triple beam balance for weight measurements. When working in a chemistry laboratory, we have to ensure our safety. Therefore, we must wear a protective glass, lab coat if required gloves and covered shoes. Let's see what are the equipments that we used in our chemistry laboratory. Boiling tubes, test tubes and cleaning brushes. This is the boiling tube that which we use to heat solution in the lab. And this is the test tube that we use to perform chemical reactions. This is one of the way of doing chemical reactions by using test tubes. Let's identify the difference between tongue and test tube holder. This is the tongue and this is the test tube holder. We use test tube holder to hold boiling tubes when we are heating a sample solution which is in boiling tube. And we use tongue to hold a beaker uh, when we are heating a solution in a beaker. We do not use tongue to hold boiling tubes as it can slip away from the tongue. If the test tubes and boiling tubes have any impurity, we have to wash it with clean water. And if they are insoluble in water, we have to wash them with dishwash. And those are the brushes that we use to clean glassware in the laboratory. If the glass wares are contaminated with acid, we can use acid resistant brushes instead of using these nylon brushes. Solution storing equipments that we used in our laboratory. We used two types of reagent bottles to store reagents in a laboratory. When we are using this reagent bottle, we remove the cap like this and place it on the table like this in order to avoid the contaminations. Then we pour the solution into a test tube and take whatever the amount that we need by using a dropper. When we are using this reaction bottles, we hold the cap by two fingers like this and pour the solution into a test tube. And then we take whatever the amount that we need using a dropper and we close the reaction bottle like this. Instead of using this reaction bottles, we can use this reaction bottle which is attached with its own dropper. So we can easily use that dropper to take the specific amount of reagent to a test tube. We do not need to take extra amount of reagent to another test tube. Flasks and beakers that we used in the laboratory. Those are the different types of beakers and flasks that we use in the lab. This is the beaker. This is the conical flask. And this is the Erlenmeyer flask. This is also known as titration flask. However, nowadays most of the people use Erlenmeyer flask for titrations. Beaker has a conical end. Therefore, we use beakers to pour a solution to another glass well. However, due to its flat surface, beaker is also used to heat solutions in the laboratory. We can wash the conical flasks and beakers by using pure water like this. We use volumetric flask to measure volumes very precisely and we mainly use them to prepare a known solution with accurate concentration.
Let's see how to prepare a solution sum. First, uncap the volumetric flask and then keep the funnel on the volumetric flask and add the solid sample into the volumetric flask carefully. Wash the watch glass with distilled water using the wash bottle. Then wash both the watch glass and the funnel using distilled water. After washing the funnel, remove it from the volumetric flask and then add some amount of distilled water to the volumetric flask. Put the stopper and shake the volumetric flask until the solid dissolved well. Then add distilled water carefully up to the mark. Then stopper the bottle and invert upside down in order to mix the whole solution evenly. Wash bottles. This is the wash bottle that we use to store deionized water or distilled water in a chemistry laboratory. We use this to get large quantity of water, somewhat less amount of water such as 10 ml and also we use to get very small amount of water by using this. First, we need to squeeze the bottle like this in order to get a somewhat less amount of water quantity. And then we have to remove the cap of the wash bottle in order to get somewhat larger amount of water quantity like this. Volume measuring equipments that we used in the laboratory. Those are the equipments that we use to measure volumes in a laboratory. This is the measuring cylinder, graduated pipette, this is the bulb pipette and this is the burette. Let's look how to use this measuring cylinder. We can read up to one decimal place by using this measuring cylinder. The reading of this volume is 23 milliliters. As you can see, we need to read the meniscus properly in order to get the accurate result. These are the two types of pipettes that we used in a laboratory. We use a bulb to fill up the solution into the pipette. We can fill a solution to a pipe head like this. Stop the filling after you get the meniscus on the marked volume. This is how we use graduated piping. 
We can fill up the graduated pipette also by using a pipette bulb. The reading of this pipe is 2.5 milliliters. Then hold the pipe vertically and transfer your solution into a beaker like this. There will be a small amount of liquid in the tip. Most pipe are calibrated to account for this liquid. We can clean the pipettes by rinsing the contaminated parts thoroughly with distilled water. Burets In laboratory, we use burret to dispense and measure variable amounts of liquid in titration. In burette, zero mark located at the top of the burette while 50 ml mark located near to the stop cup. When filled to the zero ml mark, the burette saying zero ml of the solution has been delivered. First, we must clamp the burette perpendicular to the lab bench. The burette calibration should be kept to our side. It will help us to see the amount of solution that has already delivered. Then place the funnel at the top of the bureau making sure tap is closed. Then pour the solution into the bureau up until it fills to 2 to 3 centimeters up above the zero graduated line. Once it has been filled fully, take the funnel out of the burette. Then open the tap of the burette to let out some of the solution into an empty beaker allowing solution to pour from burette tip. Tip must be checked if there is contain any air bubbles. It will give wrong result for the titration. If there are any bubble in the burette, we need to remove it by turn on and off tap very quickly. Once air bubble has been removed, the burette is refilled with solution. At this point, burette tap is open and let the solution run out until the lowest part of the meniscus is level with zero graduated mark. We always read a value at the lowest level of the curve. Here, the reading is 21 milliliters. Heating equipments that used in the laboratory. We use heating mantle to heat round bottom flask, while we use hot plate to heat beakers and other flasks. Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner is the main equipment that we used in laboratory to heat some solutions. We can adjust the flame length by adjusting the volume of the gas that come up for the burner. We can adjust the flame by controlling the oxygen amount that comes for the burner. The most suitable flame is blue flame. We must keep the boiling tube with the boiling solution away from us and especially from the people around us in order to ensure our protection. Triple beam balance. Triple beam balance is the equipment that we use to measure mass in laboratory. It is composed of three beams therefore it is known as a triple beam balance. First we need to make sure that the arms lines up with the zero. When we place a weight on the balance, the arm jumps up due to the mass of the object. Then we need to bring arm back to the zero point by moving the weights along the beams, like this. After bringing it back to the zero position, we can read the mass of the object. As shown in this video, the mass of the object is 
than 25.9 grams.